This is a behind the scenes EMA mortgage podcast. We cover the local GTA West, Southwest Ontario markets. We will highlight real life experiences of clients, partners, and experts. I am your host, Raymond Diaz. Our goal with this podcast is to share information that relates to customers' home buying experiences. We will provide information and insights to the mortgage-related contents. Welcome Canada. Welcome GTA West, Southwest Ontario. That's you, Milton, Mississauga, Georgetown, Brampton, Caledon, Guelph, Cambridge, Kitchener, Burlington, Hamilton, Ancaster, and Toronto. Hi everyone. I got a simple question, actually from a couple of clients separately last week. The question was, Is it a good time to buy? Now, certainly the question is an easy yes or no answer, but it's a lot more complicated than that. It all depends. Depending on how you your current scenario is and how you view the current market is. So there's a few factors that I made them aware of. One, obviously a lot of the economists, a lot of prognosticators out there have different opinions. If you uh, are listening to Evan Sedal, President of CMHC, you may expect a uh, anywhere from nine to eighteen percent price decrease in the next uh, few months uh, to a year. Now, obviously, that's a significant, significant decrease, significant number. Um, not everybody is in that scale. It's more on the far end of of the lowest possible uh, price decrease that we'll see. Now, sorry, we generated. Uh, We started talking about price because obviously price is one of the indicators on whether or not it's a good time to buy right now. Now the second part, uh, the next thing that we looked at was other economists. So if you're looking at a lot of the the real estate uh, brands out there, so that's the Royal Page, the Remaxes of the world, uh, Toronto Real Estate Board, a lot of the real estate specific economists, um, they're going to point out that in the last couple of months. If you look at the month-to-month numbers, uh, sales have been slowly creeping up, slowly increasing. So within the, even though we're in the middle of pandemic, we can still see that uh, there is a significant increase month after month and the number of showings that's happening. And given that, you know, we're almost at uh, some of the parts of Ontario already at stage three and for Peel and Toronto, it should be shortly after uh, where they're able to you know, real estate agents are able to do open houses again. Now, certainly those economists that that would be on the real estate side will point out the increasing number of showings, the increasing number of sales, and also prices increasing in the last few months. And even if you compare that year to year, it's been double digits, anywhere from, let's say on an average of 10 to 14%. Um, you'll see uh, an average increase in the GTA, including, let's say, GTAHA, including the Hamilton area and a lot of other places in Ontario. Now, that means that for, for, for that particular reason, it is a good time to buy because of the fact that you'll still see increasing uh, numbers of prices year after year. So you buy something today. The concept is that it'll still be for the same price, you can get more for that $700,000 purchase price today compared to next year. Now, when you look at other factors, other economists, other prognosticators, some people have said, you know what, you got you to gotta be careful uh, in terms of uh, potential bankruptcies or, or consumer proposals after, you know, the, the CERB uh, incentive from the government stops, you know, you might see some, some mortgage defaults and all that kind of stuff. Now, there was a good uh, article that, that I read last week that basically indicated that there's two major factors that we should be keeping an eye on when it comes to potential mortgage defaults. Now, one is, is employment. Certainly, the employment numbers are down, although it's been picking up because of the reopening of, of businesses and reopening of uh, during the pandemic. So more businesses are, are opening. Um, higher number of hours and such, but overall employment numbers are still down. So that's one of the factors. So that being down obviously is a negative effect uh, for the, the potential of uh, more people going uh, bankrupt or, or consumer proposal or defaulting on their mortgage. 
Now, the second part that, that was discussed was equity on the home. Now, if you have owned a property in the last year or two or five or 10 years, you'd probably built up quite a bit of equity on, on that property. That being the case, if there is a healthy property structure or equity structure on that, on, that, on that home, on that property, it's highly unlikely that you would go on default on your mortgage. The main reason for it is that if you have to readjust your finances because you can't afford that property anymore, given that there's a lot of equity on it, you would rather list and sell that property for as much as possible, get as much as possible from that purchase or from that sale, take that equity and maybe restructure and, and reset to maybe a smaller mortgage and stuff. So that alone, because of the equity that's being held into the homes in Canada today, that is less likely that that's going to happen. Now, part if you read another article, the people will discuss immigration. Immigration numbers are are down because obviously the borders are down, and immigration numbers uh, has a direct impact on on the demand side of of housing. So that makes sense. More people move into uh, Ontario, Canada obviously more demand for housing whether or not you're renting or, or buying now from a from a buying perspective when we're dealing with you know is it a good time to buy one of the things that uh, phil sofer the president of um, royal LePage, has mentioned uh, in the past that you know for immigrations it typically takes them on an average three years people that moves into canada it takes around three years to actually settle in and be in a position to buy, or that's on an average how, how when they buy. So what does that mean for us today? Today, we're in 2020, second half of 2020. We're still in the middle of pandemic. So if you're thinking, okay, 2020 or 2021, is, is it better to withhold and buy next year? Well, the reality is the people that will be affected on the immigration numbers will likely not be affected for 2020 or 2021. You'll likely, uh, those people that's gonna buy in 2020 or may basically be in a position to buy in 2021 will likely be here already. So they moved here in 2018, 2019. So those are the uh, current immigrants that are buying in 2020 or 2021 on an average. Now, people that obviously, that, that's you know saying that immigration numbers are down and those are drastic and have direct impact to to our pricing later on as well well my viewpoint on it and it's not necessarily a professional viewpoint but I looked up you know the top five top ten nations countries that's moving into Canada so that's anywhere from India China Philippines US uh, Syria Nigeria and so on a lot of those countries may still be motivated to move to Canada and why is that well, Canada's political system is somewhat stable compared to our uh, counterpart in the U.S. Um, people still see Canada uh, as a safe country to, to reside in. Our healthcare system is, is very, very good, and that's proven during the pandemic. Um, now, when it comes to the economy, our economy is, is pretty stable. Our, banking system is one of the more uh, stable banking system in the world uh, and those are obviously those are motivations for other people to move here there are jobs here that the, the, the companies that that are you know certainly that may have uh, some offices in, in in Toronto they're they're still here um, and they're still hiring they're still operating and stuff so the demand for for the jobs are still here as well now when it comes to you know uh, standard of living when it comes to education when it comes to again the, the the level of security and safety again you can't you can't say that Canada is less of a demand now than it was prior to the pandemic it's actually for me it's actually more attractive now the political component to this, though, is that the assumption is the current government, the Canadian government, will open up the borders at some point and will let people in. So 
uh, as, man, as many of the immigrants or potential immigrants that are uh, that 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 we want to to uh, let uh, cross the border and move to Canada, certainly I. I'm going to guess that there's going to be a lot of those numbers. And in fact, I think we are more of a demand. Canada is more of a demand nation now than it was prior to the pandemic. Now, going back to the same question, like, is it really, does it really make sense to buy now? Depending on your case. So if your timeline for this purchase is, let's say, two years or longer, I would say yes, buy now. You're going to move into it. You're going to pay down your own mortgage. You know, housing is a necessity here. That's part of your shelter, right? So you would be renting anyway. So there's there's only going to be there's going to be some shelter costs anyway. So might as well be paying down your own mortgage. Now, when it comes to pricing, how how you know are you should you expect capital appreciation? Now, history has shown us that in Canada, um, there is certainly capital appreciation that we can see in the long term. So the longer your your term as far as your expectation on having that house or that home or that mortgage, the longer that timeline is, the, the, the less risky it is for it to go down. And certainly overall, uh, you'll likely get uh, better capital appreciation. And in fact, it's obviously it's one of those scenarios that if it's your primary residence, it's also um, uh, tax-free as far as capital gains is concerned. Now, there's also the benefits or the pride of home ownership. So we sometimes disregard the pride of home ownership, but that's one of the major things that I believe why most Canadians or any Canadian that, that wants to, to, own home, to own their own home, um, any Canadian that wants to own their own home, I will support it. I will back it up. So certainly that is something that, that's good for you as a homeowner, that's good for your kids um, as, as part of their, you know, uh, they, they'll feel more attached to the community and so do you. You're more likely to vote and such. So again, the pride of home ownership is something that I believe in and the pride of home ownership is something that is real. Now. When it comes to other scenarios, a scenario that that, that you may be um, may be in, if you have you know a timeline that's much shorter than two years or one year or less, then it might not make sense because what happens in that particular scenario, you're more speculating, right? So you're thinking that within that 12 months, you you want to or expect that that property will definitely be you know going up in prices by double digit percentages. Now that's very likely, and it's still it, we can see it right now. But if it doesn't, that's when you're potentially coming into a loss. And where's the loss? Well, mortgage and 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 you know um, property transactions are not free. Now on a purchase side, you don't have to pay a real estate agent, but you have to pay a land transfer tax. You have to pay a uh, a lawyer for legal fees and certainly appraisals and stuff for mortgages. And potentially, if you're breaking a mortgage because you're going to sell it after six months or seven months or eight months, uh, you may be exposed to some penalties. Now, aside from that, well, by the time that you let's say sell that property or list that property eight months from now, twelve months from now, you're just paying another you know fee with regards to uh, real estate agent fee so that's let's say two and a half for the listing agent and then another two and a half percent for the for the buying agent so that's five percent in itself plus the legal fees plus the potential penalty for the mortgage as I said earlier so if your timeline is a year or less and and you don't really have to buy then I would say it's not a good time to buy for you but overall, for most people that's buying their home, buying an investment property that, that they're going to keep for two years or longer, it is definitely a good idea.